Good morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I'm not sure what has happened, but it took me a minute to get started this morning. Um, I hope y'all are having a blessed day. Um, yesterday, I did not make it on. I had a really rough day yesterday. I think because um, the day before yesterday, we did so much. I took Mama's decorations down. I took our decorations down. We redid the uh, living room, we cooked supper live, then we went to church, and so yesterday I felt like a uh, bulldozer had went over the top of me, and I stayed in bed most of the day, actually, so um, I didn't get to come on and talk to y'all yesterday, and I'm sorry about that, uh, but today is January the 11th, and um, this is a very common verse that a lot of people have heard that he talks about today. It says, in a moment... And it says, a weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. And that comes out of Psalms 30, verse 5. I'm not sure what version that is. I don't think it's KJB. But let's um, uh, read it out of my Bible right quick. Just a little bit of it. It says, um, okay. I'm just looking at it, y'all. Sorry. Um, I'm going to start a couple of verses before this one. And it says, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. If y'all just wait one second, my child just texted me. Chris, will you please text me? Let her know that I'm doing my Bible study. And she's talking about her tooth. Let's see what's going on. Sorry, y'all. Okay, let's start over. Psalms 30, verse 2. It says, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now that sounds a lot different than the first part I read. Uh, I like to, when I'm look, looking at the verse, actually kind of get a little bit into context and see where it's coming from. Um, but in this uh, Bible study today, it says, in just a moment, everything could change. It says, Joseph, uh, Joseph spent many seemingly interminable Minable. They, they use the longest words in these books. Uh, and I, I really think it's the people who edit them instead of that, the person who writes the book. Joseph spent many seemingly interminable days in an Egyptian prison, during which it certainly must have appeared that the great dreams God had given him would never come to pass. Uh, but then, in the twinkling of an eye, Joseph's circumstances were transformed radically. It says that uh, in Genesis 41.14, it reports that Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once, and he quickly brought was brought from the prison. And um, a few verses later, we read that Pharaoh proclaimed, You will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Only I will have a rank higher than yours. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Joseph went from a prisoner to ruling the palace just like that. However, your circumstances may appear. The one thing that is certain is that they will eventually change. So appreciate and cling to what is good while you have it and don't despair over the burdens and disappointments. God's help will come. And just like that, he will transform your situation in ways you could never imagine. And then he has his little um, prayer, and it says, Jesus, help me to hold on until your help comes. My life is in your hands. Amen. Uh, that is something to think about, isn't it? Uh I would find it very odd that we would be like Joseph and, and go from a prisoner to a ruler in just an instant. Um, he is, you have to think about back then, you know, God um, had his hands on Joseph. And of course, he can bless us. 
Um, and our circumstances can definitely change. Well, one way they could change it an instant is if, and this is a bad way, but I mean, it's just the way it is, is if we got in the car and left to go to the grocery store and had a bad accident, our lives could be changed in an instant. There's so many things that can change our lives so quickly um, that, like he says, we should enjoy what we have while we've got it. Um, I think about that often, um, and many of us think that we've got it all together and that we have things because we've worked hard and because of what we do, but God could change that in an instant. He could take our health away or he could take something away from us really fast uh, to get rid of that pride and to m be more dependent on him. And then he could also bless us um, and give us what we need. Um, and I find that most of the time he does give us what we need and sometimes he gives us what we want. Um, now, I'm going to look at the, since it's Friday and I've got time, I am going to look in my other book because I like it too. And we're going to see what it says for today. And it is talking about sowing seeds of righteousness. And it says, but the one who sows righteousness, a true reward. Now, to me, from what we were just talking about, if we let God use us and we're a vessel for him and we do sow some seeds of righteousness, I believe that his blessings will flow. And a lot of people are like, oh, as soon as you start serving the Lord, the, the devil attacks. The devil attacks, but um, I don't worry too much about the devil. I mean, if you're in, the, if you're in God's will, he's going to protect us most of the time. So uh, let's read this. It says, there are many ways to invest our lives, but none offers a greater reward than devoting ourselves to the pursuit of righteousness. It says, every area of our lives should reflect the holiness of God that is ours by salvation. Our thoughts, so that nothing we think about would be inappropriate for a child of God, our actions so that our lives can demonstrate that we serve a holy God. Our integrity so that we are above reproach in all of our relationships. Are you talking God's righteousness in your life? Are you taking, I'm sorry, are you taking God's righteousness in your life for granted? Righteousness is something you must allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Instead of sowing holy thoughts, you are allowing evil and sinful thoughts to grow. In, are you, it says, I'm sorry, y'all. It says, instead of sowing holy thoughts, are you allowing evil and sinful thoughts to grow in your mind? Are you allowing lust to grow unchecked within you? Does enmity, bitterness, jealousy, or unforgiveness remain in your life? Jesus said, if we seek first God in his righteousness, everything else will follow. There is a great reward in sowing righteousness. What are you presently doing to plant holiness in your life? You can find this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, if y'all want to read about it today. 1 Peter chapter 1, just read that. Um, how are you putting righteousness in your mind so that your thoughts are holy. How are you cultivating righteousness in your relationships so that you maintain your integrity? And are you instilling righteousness in your activities so that your life is above reproach? If you want to harvest righteousness in your life tomorrow, you must plant seeds of righteousness today. Um, let's go to 1 Peter verse. Uh, chapter 1, verse 15, and just see what this says. I'm curious. First Peter. So if y'all want to turn there with me, you can. It's Peter. First Peter, chapter 1. I'm in Second Peter. Now let's get to First Peter. Okay. This is entitled within the text, without spot or blemish. And let's see. 
I want to, I just kind of want to see what this is about before I start reading it. Okay. This is talking about the products of salvation, which is hope, holiness, reverence, and love. It says, without spot, spot or blemish, it says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober in hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges, according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And me and Chris were talking about this last night. Some people think that some of the things they do or some of the things they follow can make them holy or make them seem more holy than others. And uh, like a lot of the... Um, what I call man laws in the older church. And I mean, I'm a Baptist, and, but there's some laws out there. Uh, or not, I mean, they're not laws. They're just principles that they stand on, which are truly not really that biblical at all. And um, when they follow these practices, it makes them feel like they are holy or may be even holier than other people uh, because they feel like, if our walk, okay, they feel like if in our Christian walk, we were at the same place that they're in, we would do the same things that they do. But let me say this, uh, and I'll give an example. Let's say, um, what should I give for the example? Men can't wear mustaches in church. So. Really? Chris said there used to be one call that they would say that a man, a man could not have a mustache if he was going to serve in the church. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of them, y'all. You got to wear a suit and tie. You got to wear a suit and tie if you serve in the church. A woman needs to wear a dress in the church if she's going to teach. Um, I mean, there's just a handful of them. Let me just say there's not anything biblical about them. You cannot find references in the Bible that um, support these types of things, okay? Now, some people may try to, and they may find one verse and think that it applies, but most of the time it's taken out of context, and they haven't studied it. They haven't studied the Hebrew word and what the verse is actually referencing and talking about. So, with that said, there are some that think that because they do these things, it makes them more holy or that they are in a holier walk with God than the other people around them. Let me say this. The only thing that makes us holy is Jesus Christ's blood that was shed for us and the Holy Spirit living with us, within us. There is absolutely nothing, nothing, not one thing that we can do that makes us holy. Um, so y'all keep that in mind. If you feel like, you know, as we read some of this stuff today, and he tells you to put off the old man, and some of them were lusts of the flesh. And some of you may think, well, I don't have lusts of the flesh. Well, when we get old, we really don't, so we can care less. You know, we're not like we were when we were young. But that is not the only sin out there. There's so many more things. And if we think that we're without sin, then that's the sin of pride. So let me just say, everything about us pretty much is unholy, except the fact that Jesus Christ comes and lives within our heart 
That's the only thing really that's good inside of us. If you think that our flesh is in one bit, is one even the tiniest bit good, you're completely wrong because it says in the Bible, there's none good, no, not one. So without living through the Holy Spirit and doing things through the Spirit, um, there's really no righteousness in us. So I just want to say that because there's so many people out there that think that they're in a higher place than somebody else. And let me just say, you're not. And if you think you are, you better be careful because all of us are prone to sin. All of us can fall. So it's very important that uh, we realize who we are, realize that we are weak and we do need Jesus Christ and we do need the Holy Spirit to help us stand um, and not be prideful about anything like that. So let's just, um, I hope y'all have a blessed, blessed day. I'm, I'm looking on here. Sorry, I went over the camera to see who else on here. Um, it is Friday and uh, me and Chris have, are finally going to head out and return some items that we received at Christmas time. I bought the kids quite a few things I didn't like. So we're going to head out on that little journey. We made sure that everybody was back at school and we really should have went during the week this week, but we haven't been home enough. Yesterday, Chris cooked for the family, the ginger that passed away because I was sick in bed most of the day. And he was a blessing for me yesterday. And Amy made them a chocolate cake. So um, I'm, I'm truly blessed. I can tell you that. And uh, just keep that family in your prayers. We'll be having her memorial service on Saturday. And um, anyway, it's a really sad situation. But God took her home. She was a child of God. And she's in a good place. And I'm sure she's pain free. And not suffering anymore. And that's really what matters the most. We shouldn't. I mean, I know we grieve and we miss people, but when we have the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, it is a beautiful thing to see somebody get to go and be with our Savior. Um, let's say our prayers today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for the beautiful weather. I'm actually thanking you for some cold weather. Um, I thank you for... Um, healing ginger by bringing her to heaven to be with you i know that uh she confessed that you are her personal savior and i'm sure she's with you now and i am thankful that all of us have a hope the hope that uh, we could only have through your son and his precious blood um i pray that each and every one of us would realize our place in this world is um to worship and serve you and I pray that all of us would know that there's absolutely nothing good about us. And without you, we would be lost and undone. And we just thank you so much for what you've done for us. Um, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us through the Holy Spirit to be able to shine your light and show some righteousness to the world. Um, may we do that throughout the day today. Maybe, maybe just smile at people or tell them that we love them or whatever it is that you feel like we need to do. Would you lay it on our heart and give us opportunities uh, to serve you? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. Um, and I guess we will probably see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye.